Um, let me show you the other one. So we're talking now about the bearish runner. So pretty easy to conceptualize, right? Bearish runner is just the opposite of the bullish runner. Uh, one to 20 days out after the earnings announcement, we're looking for the stock price to go down. A little bit harder to find some of these, as you know, um, we're buying puts, but I like this. I like the bearish pre-runner and the bearish runner, um, especially in kind of this environment that we have now. I mean, the market is going up, uh, but you know, with some sentiment out there of the market possibly stalling or going even down, so having some of these bullish, or excuse me, bearish pre-runners or bearish runners in the account helps you kind of have some puts in your account to where if the market does fall, you are making some money on some positions potentially to the downside. So I think these offer some great opportunities to kind of help you, I don't want to say hedge your portfolio, but use an, a, a different type of uh, expectation to actually be able to catch the move maybe to the downside. So institutions expect some stocks to have a large sell-off after a negative earnings report, which leads to major selling pressure. And that's where you're gonna get the price movement to the downside. Again, one to 20 days after the earnings is, is what we're looking for here on the bearish runner. Um, again, 25 to 50% profit on the long put within that 20 day window. And either my profit target's gonna be met, stop loss met, or I'm getting out 20 days after the earnings release. Um, long put I find is gonna be your best strategy here. But again, testing some of those other strategies, maybe testing some of those you know, bear call spreads might be a way to collect some credit and, uh, and kind of let the stock do its thing. Risk defined and, uh, you, know, the, you know, your potential profit because of the credit that you're receiving if you're doing that, uh, you know, if you're doing that uh, bear call spread. Again, strategies like the naked calls and things I just spoke about them, but again, if you're selling naked calls, just remember uh, that you are talking about earnings and some uncertainty there even after the earnings announcement. So just be careful that you know the risk that you have uh, involved. Long put strategy set up, similar to what we talked about on the call side, entering one day after the earnings, 20 days is our exit at most, 25% profit, 100% stop loss, milk the option, 60 days, 30 delta. Uh, how to find good candidates, close 20 days after is gonna be less than negative 3%, uh, seven to 10 days, or excuse me, seven out of the past 10 earnings. So I want to find a stock that has moved more than 3% to the downside, right? Or less than three, negative 3%, more than negative 3% to the downside. So it's moving for us to the downside. Um, this one I used the intuitive surgical. So we can see, um, you know, here we got a little bump up in the stock, kind of moved up. So probably a loser for the uh, long put strategy. Here, earnings come out, stock sold off and went down. Did rally back up a little bit there, but we should have probably got out at this particular point here. Stock was up, sold off, went sideways. Here, stock was actually up and kind of continued the trend higher. So possibly two out of these four were losers, but you know that's just based on the graph, not really on how the, the option price is moving. Um, so we can see this trade 10 was one of the losers there. Um, and you can see the trade 10 is, is, is right here. So the trade actually did go higher. Um, so the Intuit Surgical stock price we're looking at, you know, roughly $400 to $700 stock price. So that's why our debit here for a long put is, is fairly expensive. So again, you know, might be too expensive for what most people want to trade. And if it is, then it'd be a fun one to watch, but you might want to just bypass on that one because that would be one contract of the, the long put. And we can see the results, uh, results next to it. Graph here is win percentage for that strategy on Intuitive Surgical is 90% with 11.39 profit factor. Um, and the most optimal time frame for this one for the bearish runner is to get into the trade after earnings and hold it for 16 days at most if you haven't reached your profit or your stop loss at that time. I used uh, Workday for the next one. Uh, so Workday you can see earnings, stock sold off, earnings, stock sold off, earnings, sideways, earnings, stock actually spiked up but then sold off. So these are two interesting spots here where maybe that 25% profit is, is giving some money back to the market. You know, maybe I'm leaving some money on the table. Uh, always test it and always make sure that if the test works, you know, it's, mass, it's matching that risk profile. But, uh, you know, I never find a problem if you can afford it and it matches what you want to do is to buy multiple contracts and try a scale out, a scale -out approach if you can. Uh, using that scale out approach again is 
it's pretty critical to make sure that options you're trading have a tight bid ask spread because um, I typically am not a fan of using a stop price on an option because I feel like uh, other traders can kind of see that area that I have in there and they can kind of hit my order and then reverse the market. So I don't uh, like doing that, but uh, sometimes it might be prudent. And if the, uh, if the bid ask spread is there, it might be a little more, it might be a little more difficult for that to happen or if the open interest in the uh, volumes there. Uh, Workday, we can see uh, stock again on this one is around $200 or so. So you can see my put options are, you know, right around a thousand bucks. Um, but uh, fairly quickly, I'm getting out of some of these trades for, for a nice little profit. Uh, there's your win percentage, 80%, seven profit factor, $2,300 profit over the course of those trades. Um, same thing for Workday, I wanted to show you with how, the, uh, how it works within the system. You can see this graph here. Uh, earnings date, my entry of my long put position, and then the stock kind of went down, and then on the last day it sold off, closed down towards that low, and I was able to get out for my profit. Shows you here that 828, you know, I bought the 1218 expiration of the $220 put for 1448, and then I was able to get out on 92 of that put for 1853, and we can see the implied volatility. Um, you know, and the Delta and things like that. Entry date here, the reason I got out was because I was able to hit my 25% uh, my profit. Uh, let's get back in here. Uh, the most optimal time frame for this one that we tested was 18 trading days. So getting in after earnings, going out 18 days. And then, um, you know, I just put a little, some notes in here, you know, further optimizing strategies within Delphian uh, is a crucial tool that everyone has available to them. You know, we try to find uh, the best scenarios we can for these earnings and for the symbols that we use, but that doesn't mean that you might not be able to add different screener criteria in there and maybe find a strategy that might work a little bit better. Um, if our strategy is at 100%, I don't know if you can find much better than 100%, but you can always find something that matches your investment goals, your risk profile, um, and you might be able to make it a little bit better. So always go in the system and and optimize it. If you need help, you know, that's what Josh and myself are here for. Um, so that's what I said there, just optimize them. You can always, within the strategies, as we showed on those strategy setups, you can always set stuff up for higher profit targets, tighter stop losses. You can use different strike selection models. We use Delta um, on these models, but you can use different things. I mean, some of these we use standard deviation and a percentage from close, but you can use a couple of other different strike selection models as well. Um, you can always scale out of the positions. You can use different roll criteria. You know, if you're in a long call and you want to roll it into a bull call spread, you can test that as well in the system. Um, you can do it fairly quickly and uh, you can analyze it on, you know, those symbols or multiple symbols to get a good idea of, of what's going to happen, you know, if you do this and then do that and so on and so forth. So, um, Let's see. What I wanted to show you with that workday is, you know, you can see on this chart here, we talked, I talked about it, you know, workday spiked up, the long put made money. So I probably got out here, but it actually went down further. So in theory, if you wanted to test that more of a movement, you can always do that instead of the 25% profit. You can say, well, what if I wanted to test it for more of a profit, 50% or 100%? You can do that fairly quickly. And then this is what an example would show you. See the chart sold off and went down further. If I held it to the exit day, which it was showing uh, the 914 as the exit day, because that's the day that I had last available for data when I tested this to put on the slide. But you can see I made 25% profit as, as I tested it. But if I wanted to be a little more aggressive with it, instead of selling the option, I think at 1800 bucks, I could have used it to where the option was valued at almost $26. So, I just the reason I show that is there's always room to to test different things versus the way that I test them or maybe the way that Josh tests them doesn't make one you know better than the other but I think if you can find the analysis that is going to back your theory it's just going to give you a more comfortable more confidence when you're actually trading it live and uh, and trading it yourself so you know symbols trade differently uh, strategies trade differently on those symbols so. You know, be nimble, use different strategies when you're testing and, uh, and get a good idea of, of what you want to do uh, before you do it. So.
uh, with the bearish runner, we're talking about buying puts, talking about stock prices going down, not as many candidates. 28 trades uh, with over 80%, seven over 90. So a smaller sample size here. Uh, again, don't forget to skip the holidays and weekends. Enter the trade after an earnings announcement. Always use your limit orders. And again, 25% profit. I always put that in there when I get filled on the order and I put it in GTC and, uh, and walk away until I have to get out, you know, that 20 days out or in that workday example, we had 18 days. So that's all I had for those. That's pretty fast, but I didn't, I wanted to leave the last couple minutes for questions and things like that if anybody had any. Um, but, uh, but yeah, Josh, any input, any questions on this, guys? Yeah, there's one in chat uh, about different pull. conditional orders. Let's pull it up. I'm trying to pull it up. Sorry. It's not pulling up for some reason. Let's see. Oh, here we go. Uh, is there a way to enter stock a week? On the, I don't think we can do that, right, Josh? It's talking about entering in some of those conditional orders. Um, but I don't think you can do the time, you know, like exit 16 days. Yeah. I mean, you yeah, can I don't, a stop and a <clears throat> profit, but I don't think the time. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I don't believe in Trader you can do that in TOS. It's possible. I haven't used it enough. Um, there's other people on the chat that maybe can send an answer to that via email, and I'll get back to you on that one. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, with COVID and everything's happening, the market's been so crazy. Um, some of the wait times for some of those brokerages have been so long that I haven't been able to get in contact with them to try to figure some of those things out, but that's a good question. That would be interesting to to be able to put that OCO in there based on the days, that, that would be interesting if you could do it. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll look into that. 